I'm in the beautiful village of Tinton, in the Wye Valley area of outstanding natural beauty. Situated about five miles north of Chepstow, Tinton is on the Welsh bank of the River Wye, with England on the opposite bank. It is popular with tourists, in particular for the scenery and the ruined Tinton Abbey. Tinton Abbey is one of the most impressive ruinous abbeys in the country, for the walls of the great church remain intact, rising to their full height and pierced by soaring windows that flood the interior with light. Founded in 1131 by Walter de Clare, the Lord of Chepstow, the abbey was the first Cistercian house in Wales. However, despite its wonderful qualities, the monastery never grew to great importance. Like the other monastic communities of England and Wales, the abbot, the monks and lay workers were evicted under Henry VIII's dissolution of the monasteries, and it has stood empty since 1536. Although stripped of its roof, lead and glass, and quarried for building stone, the abbey remains remarkably complete. A tourist attraction since the 18th century, it has inspired artists and writers, including Turner, Gilpin and Wordsworth, and continues to attract visitors to this lovely corner of Wales. It's been a very long time since I last came to Tinton and it was another place that I used to know really well whilst I was growing up in Chepstow. And when you come to the Wye Valley, Tinton is a place that you have to visit. Next to the abbey is the White Monk Tea Room and Gift Shop, which serves homemade clotted cream scones, cakes and sandwiches. Adjacent to this is the Anchor Inn, which dates back to the 12th century. The inn has a recently completed garden room conservatory, which has improved the facilities and houses tea rooms. Walking from the abbey, I made my way towards the centre of the village. The Wye Valley's Turnpike Road, now the A466, was completed in 1829, and along with the arrival of the Wye Valley Railway in the 1870s, greatly increased the number of visitors, and tourism became the backbone of Tintin's economy, and remains so today. The Royal George Hotel is one of several hotels, inns and guest houses located beside the main road. The award-winning Abbey Mill is a complex of shops set around an old mill building. It was firstly a corn mill, but was probably a woollen mill for part of its life, as well as being a wood turnery, sawmill and builder's stall until the mid-1970s. Now the various restored buildings house craft shops, a coffee shop and a licensed restaurant. Next to Abbey Mill stands the Wireworks Bridge, built in 1876 to provide a rail link from the Wye Valley Railway to the Lower Wireworks site. Ironically, this bridge is probably the most visible reminder of Tintin's industrial past. The bridge was used in the early 20th century as a horse-drawn tramway, and now carries a public footpath to the opposite side of the river. This is where I began my walk, as I crossed the bridge from Wales into England.
I don't think I really ever appreciated Tintin when I was a kid. When I was growing up in Chepstow and I went to my local comprehensive school, there were a lot of kids who lived here in Tintin who went to my school. So I think I still associated Tintin with a school connection and that's why I probably didn't appreciate it as much as I should have done. But I do now realise that it is such a beautiful place and to be perfectly honest with you, it's not just probably the nicest place in the Wye Valley, I think very few places in the country rival Tintin's beauty. Continuing along the track, I followed it as far as a junction, where I took the stony path climbing up to the left. As the path levelled out, I ignored a turning off to the right and continued ahead onto an attractive level track leading through the beech woodland of Caswell Wood on a natural terrace which follows the Wye upstream. As the path exited the wood, I went over a stile on the left and took a path heading straight for the river. I then swung right along the riverbank, heading towards the next village. The small village of Brockweir lies on the Gloucestershire bank of the River Wye. The name Brockweir dates from about the 7th century and possibly means the weir by the brook. This is Brockweir Bridge, which crosses the river linking the village to the A466. The bridge is cast iron and was constructed in Chepstow, opening in 1906. For centuries, Brockweir had a thriving shipbuilding and river industry. It was here in Brockweir, the highest points reached by a normal tide, that cargoes were transferred from the riverboats onto barges, ready to be sent to towns and villages further upriver. Walking around this sleepy, quiet village today, it's hard to imagine that, in the early 19th century, Brockweir was thought to be one of the most lawless places in the country. Its reputation was earned by having around 16 inns and beer houses to cater for the manual labourers who were employed to load and unload the ships at the quayside. Today, there is just the one pub in the village, the very popular and delightful Brockweir Inn. In 1833, the Duke of Beaufort issued an order for the Moravian church to be set up in the village because of its lawless reputation, and the church was built on the site of a former cockfighting pit. The church has served the village since then, and is the only church in Brockweir offering regular worship.
it's always worth stopping in Brockway. Walking back through the village, I turned right after the pub and climbed out of Brockweir. It was quite steep, but as I climbed higher, the views back towards Brockweir and the Wye Valley were fantastic. I think it's the only steep climb of the whole of today's walk, so that's nice to know. But when you look at the views behind me, doesn't it make the climb worth it? Anyway, I'm just about to be reunited with an old favourite. Back on Offers Dyke Path. And this is a section of the route where you can see remains of the old dike. And the path here actually runs along the top of the dike. However, I'm not actually going to be following off this dike path at the moment, but I will rejoin it later on. And I'm just taking a route that takes me across this field. After climbing across several fields, I passed Beach's farm with its campsite and continued along the quaintly named Miss Grace's Lane. woodland for a while, and when the trees on the right disappeared, I turned right on a track signposted to Offersdyke Path and Devil's Pulpit. I crossed four fields until eventually entering more woodland to immediately arrive at Offersdyke Path again. Here I just needed to walk 50 metres to the left to a place I was particularly excited about visiting today. So here I am finally at Devil's Pulpit. The Devil's Pulpit itself is simply a small rocky outcrop, but its great attraction is its sensational view of Tintern Abbey below. Devil's Pulpit was already known as such by 1769, after the idea gained credibility that Satan preached there to try to deflect Tintin's monks from their Christian ways. Mm -hmm. 
I decided to climb up onto Devil's Pulpit to try to get the best views I could. Absolutely fantastic. That must surely rate as one of the finest views ever. It's been an absolute pleasure coming up here again to see this today. Well, I'm now going to walk a little bit more of Offa's Dyke Path. My route ran northwards along Offa's Dyke Path the impressive ramparts of the dike itself very prominent in places, with the top of the well-preserved bank up to six metres high. At a junction of paths, I left off as dike path again and took the stony path winding down to the left. Dropping down steeply through the dark woods, the path eventually joined the track leading to Brockweir, which I had followed earlier. From here, I retraced my steps down the path, and back over the railway bridge into Tintin. Another lovely wall then. And although I did Offers Dyke about 28 years ago, the other paths I've walked today, I don't reckon I've done for probably the best part of 40 years. So, But you know what? It only seems like yesterday in many ways. Well, I'm back in Tindon now, and I feel suitably chilled out now. I could quite happily spend another hour here, just sitting beside the river with a cup of tea, just looking at the river flowing. <laughs> 